Warning, these videos are designed for HVAC professionals only. Please, please do not attempt this on your own stuff. Welcome to TEC Tube. I'm Dave Herman with Tech Support. Today we're gonna go over AC charging and we're gonna use the preferred method of subcooling to check the charge on this unit, charge it if necessary, or remove charge if that's also needed. Okay, we're at the unit. We have our gauges here. Uh, we have a three port gauge set up here. Sometimes you have a four port. Uh, this gauge set up. Our high sides are red hose. Our low side is our blue hose. So we're going to get those hooked up to the unit right now. High side going to be put on first. That's hooked up uh, on this unit that's on the left. And it's going to be our smaller line size. It's a 3 8 line on this unit. So we get that tied in. Make sure all our hoses are tight so we don't have any leakage. Then we're going to take our low side, our blue hose. We're going to get that hooked up on the other side. On this unit, it's a three-quarter line. Hey, from here, we're going to check our pressures to see where they're at. Uh, it looks like we're running, uh, it's right about a 115 suction pressure, and we're at about a 255 uh, high side pressure. There's different types of gauges you can use. A lot of the gauges now, uh, guys are starting to use our, our digital gauges. The digital gauges will do some of this process for you as far as the subcooling. It's, they're gonna have built-in uh, temperature probes to hook up to your lines. We're kind of going back and doing it uh, a more simple process, kind of an old school way, where we're gonna be hooking up stuff separately to check our temperatures and kind of uh, do it on mathematics ourselves instead of having uh, the gauges do it for us. So we have our pressures. We know what those are. So we're gonna get our multimeter. We're gonna plug in our temperature clamp. We're going to set it to temperature and we're going to clamp that on because we're doing subcooling. We're going to be clamping that on our liquid line. So that'll be picking up our temperature on the liquid line of the unit. So when doing subcooling, what we're going to be doing is taking that actual uh, temperature line. We're going to be using that, the temperature on our high side line. And then we're also going to be using from our gauges on our high side. We're going to take our pressure on that high side gauge and use our gauge itself. And we're going to convert that over to temperature. So we're going to take those two temperatures and use them to find our subcooling. Once we have that number, the units are going to have the subcooling tagged on the side of them, our target subcooling. On this unit, it's going to be listed uh, as indoor TXV subcooling, and it's listed at 10. So the number we're looking for is 10. So 10 degrees of subcooling is our number, our target number. You want to be within two or three degrees of that, high or low. Obviously, the closer you are to that, the better it is but we're gonna shoot for 10, we're gonna see where we're at. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take our, our gauge, you know, pressure, convert it to temperature, which is that's gonna be our saturation temperature, and that is gonna be uh, 90. So that's gonna be 90 degrees. So we're at 90 degrees, and then on our, our meter, we're showing 82.4 degrees, so we're gonna say that's gonna be, we'll just round that to 82 degrees. So we're gonna take our 90 and subtract 82, that's gonna give us eight. So our actual subcooling we have on this unit right now is eight degrees. So we are within our two or to three degrees of our 10. So we're actually good on this unit as far as our charge goes. So if that uh, subcooling number came in well below that, say we came in, you know, at five degrees subcooling, we're gonna wanna add charge. So we're gonna wanna get that subcooling number up higher 
at our 10 or our 10 range. Now, if we're substantially over that, beyond say our two degree, two to three degrees over, which would be you know 14, 15 degrees or higher, then we're going to want to get our a reclaimer and we're going to want to remove some of that refrigerant out of there. So it's important that when you're charging by subcooling that you're following this process so you're as accurate as possible. And then with that comes the efficiency and the proper operation of the unit, which also aids in humidity removal from the house, along with the people being comfortable as possible in their residence. Now that our unit is run about 10 minutes and we've seemed to settle in at those pressures, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna charge the unit. We are within range where we need to be, 10 subcooling, and our actual unit is running at eight, but we are just gonna add some refrigerant just to go through the, the charging process. So I'm gonna take my extra hose, my charging hose, I'm gonna get my jug of 410 refrigerant. I'm gonna hook that up. I'm gonna open up the tank. I am gonna turn that over. I'm gonna come up to my manifold set. I'm gonna do a slight purge. Get the air out of the lines. And now I'm gonna to begin to add a little bit of refrigerant to that. So right now there's refrigerant going into the system. And now your temperature and pressures are gonna be changing, uh, you know, on both sides. So we're gonna be seeing a different pressure uh, on our gauges themselves, which is gonna change our saturation temperature. And then we're also gonna be seeing a temperature change on our, our liquid line itself, which is gonna reflect on the actual meter. So we're gonna have to kind of follow that and see where we end up. So it looks like on our gauges, that kind of put us at, you know, we're getting close to about, you know, closer to uh, 92, you know, between 91 and 92 degrees. And we're still showing about 82. and we're starting to drop a little bit. We're getting into the 81 range on our meter. We'll add a little bit more. We had a, a bit of a jump there on our high side, our temperature, and now we're settling back. And it looks like we're we're settling in right at about 93. And right now we're at 78.8 and it's changing a little bit there so we'll say that's about 79 So we're at about 93 and 78. We have the unit charged and now that it's run for a little bit, we're running about 10 minutes or so, we've kind of settled in to see where we're at. Uh, we're running about 95 on our saturation temperature, you know, on our gauges. And we're running about 78 on our actual liquid line temperature. So that kind of puts us way off on our, our subcooling. So now you saw how easy it is to overcharge a unit. 
you know, I didn't add a whole lot of refrigerant to this system and it put us way over on our subcooling. That's why it gives us that little, little space that two to three degrees above or below our actual subcooling a number on each unit. So if you're within that range, you're gonna be fine. You know, in this case, now we, we way overshot. So we gotta hook up our recovery unit. We gotta remove some of that refrigerant from the system to get this working the way it should be. Overcharged systems don't run efficiently. The TXV is not gonna operate properly. And just in general, it's gonna be bad for that compressor, you know, over the long run. So we wanna get the refrigerant out of there and get this running properly. So we're gonna get our recovery unit hooked up. We're gonna get the AC shut down now. We're gonna hook up our recovery unit. And we're gonna pull some of this refrigerant out of here and try to get this back, you know, operating where it should be. The first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get my refrigerant tank, make sure it's off. Remove our hose from that, get that out of the way. Got our recovery unit set here. We're already plugged in with power. Our, this recovery unit, we have an in and an out. I'm gonna tie in my gauge hose to the import. I'm gonna take an extra hose, hook it to the out port, and the uh, next one will go to our actual tank. Always make sure your recovery tanks uh, aren't over full. You know, you should be weighing that in. This recovery tank is empty, so I kind of know where we're at with this one. So I'm gonna get this opened up. We've got our recovery unit itself is closed down right now. Purge, make sure we don't have any extra air in that line. I'm gonna open up my gauges. From the unit. Purge, get any air out of that line. Gonna open up to recover. And I'm gonna start my recovery unit. And I'm gonna just gonna let this run for a few minutes. I'm gonna watch it pull down a bit. I'm gonna probably have to pull uh, maybe a pound or so out of this. I can't be sure uh, exactly what I'm gonna need to pull out. So I'm guessing it's gonna be about a pound, but I'm gonna pull some out. Gonna get start the unit back up and see where we're at as far as our charges. Check the subcooling again, see where we're at, and you know, go from there. So we're at a point now where we've got the recovery unit shut down, got the AC back up and running been running for a couple minutes kind of waiting to see where our, our pressure settle in at and our temperature one of the indicators you're gonna have when you first put your gauges on on your suction side you're gonna kind of see where that's at to know if you're you know actually you know low or not it's not always gonna be an exact indicator without checking that sub cooling but you know for example you know if you're at you know the hundred range on your suction side you know, right near that 100 range, you're gonna be, you know, right around that, that freezing point as far as temperature goes on the refrigerant, which is somewhere you don't wanna be. We don't wanna have those lines freezing up in any way. You know, if you're below 100, you're gonna be passing freezing, you're gonna be below freezing, you're definitely gonna be freezing up, you're definitely gonna be low on charge. So looking at that, that gauges, your temperature and pressure are always gonna be easily checked just by looking across at your temperature gauge, you know, where your pressure is at. So you always want to reference that also when you're just doing a quick check when you first hook up your, your gauges to a unit. But then subcooling is going to be the way we're going to actually confirm and see where our charge is actually at and how accurate it is. So let's look at where we're at now, if we've been running. So our actual line temperature, we're running about 79 degrees. And it looks like we're right at about 89, 90 degrees on our uh, liquid side. So that's gonna put us right at 10, 11 degrees subcooling. So we're right where we need to be on this unit. You know, so just, you know, an example of what we've gone over, it's real easy to overcharge a unit. So you gotta be careful when you're charging, don't rush. 
you know, add some refrigerant, kind of see where things settle out. If you're close to where that charge is, if you're within that two or three degrees of subcooling, you're probably going to be okay. So you just kind of play things out and see where things are, you know, as you run the unit. You know, once again, when you walk up to the unit, you put your gauges on, let the unit settle and run for a while, let it 10 to 15 minutes, let it settle. Let's see where that pressures come at, then check your subcooling again, see where it's at. So you want to make sure you have an accurate charge when all is said and done.